Good evening, and welcome to our show, Brookfield Public Advocate. I'm your host, Bruce Senek. Tonight's guest is Aaron Boyd, editor of Brookfield Patch. First, a little background on Aaron. Aaron graduated from the University of Connecticut with a degree in journalism and has spent the last three years covering local news online in both New York and Connecticut, the last year here in Brookfield with Patch. He came to Patch in February of 2010 after having worked as news editor for an online publication on Long Island. Aaron, thanks for coming and welcome to our show. Thanks for having me, Bruce. Aaron, please give our audience a little background and history of Patch. Sure. So Patch uh, is about two and a half years old now, and it began uh, a while back when our, the CEO of AOL, Tim Armstrong, uh, was actually in his hometown down in Greenwich, Connecticut. And uh, he saw some local tag sales and events going on around town and wondered where he could go online to find out what was going on in town and realized that he really didn't have a place. And so that was kind of the beginning of Patch, not just as a news source, but as a, a community resource for everything going on in, in your local town. Yeah, very interesting. What, what are Patch's goals, um, Patch's objectives, and what, if, if anything, makes Patch different? Well, Patch really is, as we call it, a hyper-local news source. So not only are we looking to to do news online, but we're looking to really focus in on the local communities. Uh, both underserved communities and places where there are other news organizations already established. The idea is to take the traditional news platform, which is generally uh, centered around one big city or one news-making area, and with bureaus in, in outlying areas that they also cover. Patch kind of looks to do this from the reverse. We cover each town individually, and eventually we're going to have one large news organization that covers everything going on everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, I b believe that you recently had your uh, one year anniversary mm -hmm. with, with Patch. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've learned and, and what are some of the biggest surprises. Well, Brook coming into Brookfield, which uh, I'll be honest with you, was a town I had actually never even heard of until I uh, was posted here. Uh, but it's a wonderful community and uh, it's, it's been great to break into somewhere that is thirsty not just for more news and information, but really for a place to gather online as a forum to post uh, events and things going on around in town. And it's, uh, it's been very interesting to really see how this has been embraced by a town that was originally uh, relatively skeptical of, of having a new, especially online, news organization. You, you found the town skeptical? At first, there were many people who came to me and said, you know, that there have been issues with other online new go news organizations, sp specifically with, with comments and things like that getting uh, out of hand, and uh, with blogs and, and the like in town that came and went and that uh, some people loved, some people hated. So people weren't really sure what to expect. Uh, Patch was definitely new on the scene and it took some time for people to realize that what we were trying to do was not just, you know, to be a local source in Brookfield, but to grow larger throughout Connecticut and throughout the nation. Uh, and that our goal really is accurate, reliable journalism. Since I've started following Patch, which pretty much does coincide about with when uh, you came to town, I've, I've noticed it's spreading, and I say that in a good way. <laughs> how, how do you choose where and when to start covering a town? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of that's done uh, out of headquarters in New York uh, with our editorial team there. They really decide how, we, how the map grows. Uh, I'll say Brookfield, when we launched last March, we were the 63rd in the network and we were in four states at the time, and we were the ninth one in Connecticut. Now we are at uh, 70 plus sites in Connecticut, closing in on 80, wow. and uh, well over 800 sites in over 20 states nationwide. So the idea behind how we grow is really we focus in a lot on underserved communities, uh, similar to Brookfield, which has other news sources but lost its own dedicated news source a few years back. Right. Uh, and we also look at communities that really have strong ties to the internet, uh, where we see a lot of internet use, a lot of computers in the homes, and uh, other news sources online that have really kind of gotten the ball rolling, getting people used to accessing their news online. 
Yeah, you, you mentioned, of course, a few years back uh, losing the, uh, the Brookfield Journal, now the Housatonic uh, Times, and with their recent pullback uh, you know, of, the, of the weekly uh, paper to, to our north, one less source of local news. Uh, tell us how online news can help increase civic engagement and access to information. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, by being online, that gives us a, a number of opportunities. One is we're not restricted by space. Uh, this becomes readily apparent in things like the current budget debate. Uh, we can post the entire budget online. You can go, you can read it, you can file through, see what people are talking about, get to know the documents themselves that you, can't ju you really can't do in a print publication. You don't have the space to, to send every, to the budget to every home. So this really gives people a way to engage their government and their civic responsibilities without necessarily having to go through the effort of going to town hall for every meeting or going and making sure that they have all the documents themselves or even if they're not as uh, um, uh, used to working online and getting things off of the internet, they don't have to try to browse around the town website, we have it all right there for you. So it does allow people more access to information that uh, just wasn't there before. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, uh, I recall, the online version of the Danbury News Times, and I think the comments um, mm -hmm. did, did get a little out of hand, and I, I don't even know if they allow them any longer. But um, you know, I, I believe comments in space that have been lost to post letters to the editor and other mm -hmm. opinions can shape dialogue in the community. Can you expand on that? Uh, do you have any specific situations? Sure. Uh, I think one great one was uh, the Kids' Kingdom debate recently. Uh, we had a lot of strong opinions on both sides of the matter. Uh, everybody wanted the playground re uh, renovated and, and realized that it was something that had to be done in town. But the actual method and, and how it was going to be done was put to question and eventually put to a referendum. We had uh, many, many letters to the editor come in, many comments on stories as they came in. And you could really see the debate going on in town right there in front of you for everyone to see. It was no longer pockets of people in town getting together to, to discuss what they thought before going out to vote. It was the entire community getting engaged in one place. And while it may not have been everyone in town engaging every day, it, it was clear to see that people were having this conversation now in an open forum and uh, one that was freely accessible. I, I have noticed on the comments, uh, I think there's a little thing you can click on as flag is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. does, does that hof happen very often? And is there any kind of screening that um, you know is, is done by either yourself mm -hmm. or, or the or patch? Well, I am really the, the the last line of defense for everything that goes on in Brookfield Patch. We do have support from headquarters in New York and other people who who work with us here in Connecticut, but really the local editor is uh, the one who monitors everything that goes on on their website. And uh, with ours, I do monitor every comment that's posted, make sure we read through, make sure it doesn't violate our terms of service. Uh, we don't allow personal attacks of any sort. That said, we do allow dissent. And when it comes to political and public figures, uh, sometimes things can get a little bit heated. And we'll let it go to an extent, but we do shut it down if it gets out of hand. The flagging option allows people who think that a comment is inappropriate to click that option and it, it puts a red flag on it to, al to alert the editor that hey somebody in town thinks that this may not be right and in fact if a story is flagged by three different users uh, readers uh, it will be taken down temporarily until it's evaluated and then the editor makes the final decision. It's hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell us, tell the audience uh, how the industry is being affected by the ever-increasing shift to online news. Well, you know, news has certainly picked up the pace, uh, even with the advent of cable news and the 24-hour news cycle that was already starting to speed up. But with online news, we really are in a instant, uh, instantaneous uh, mode now. When something big breaks, you'll find that now, rather than having a processed story the next day with all of the information, you'll have a short blurb saying, hey, something's going on, uh, check back for updates later. And so then news becomes more, you can see the evolution of uh, the journalistic process. You can see how when we hear about something, it gets posted to let you know that something's going on. As we get more information, you see how that information comes in and how it molds the facts and how it molds the story. So not only is it now faster, but it's also a lot more transparent. 
Seems to me like there's a lot on your plate. <laughs> And do, do you have time to sleep? <laughs> T tell us how much time, uh, you know, or, or if there's a normal routine that you, that you have during the sure, day. Sure, sure. Well, uh, yeah, I, I tend to be a bit of a night owl. So uh, I do work late into the night getting the, but I think that's normal in, in journalism. Uh, normally people read in the morning, so you get everything kind of put together at night for the next day. Uh, so I usually may wake up, uh, you know, around 8 or 9 in the morning. Maybe even a little later on some days if I can. And, uh, you know, the day kind of starts off answering emails. Usually wake up to about 70 to 100 emails. Really? Uh, take care of all those procedural things. Uh, take care of my freelancers, all that kind of stuff. And uh, then start reporting and writing. And uh, most of the day is taken up talking to people on the phone, visiting with people for interviews, uh, out there in the community taking pictures, or just talking to people, maybe not even for a story, just to get to know what's going on in town. Uh, it is a 24-7 job. You learn to weave your life into your work. <laughs> uh, so when people ask, you know, how many hours a week do you work? Well, it, you know, 24-7. It, it never actually stops, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's nice because you do control your own schedule. You know, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good way to live, I think. Yeah.